I'm resident of Colwood for YouTube. Uh, I'm joined by my buddy Patrick McCray, my buddy Alan Talant, my buddy Gordon Demosky. We're here to talk I Claudius episode six. Uh, guys, and, and you, know Hunt, what, you know what six is in Latin, don't you? But the Latin word for six is no. it's sex. <laughs> Told you. Oh my god. Well, well, yeah, but this episode has quite a lot of it. Boom, chicka, wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. Now, uh, okay, now, this is Queen of Heaven, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, okay, so you're, so, so we're all talking about the same episode, because it is, there is the stuff with, um, it's not, is it La Villa? Yeah. Patricia Quinn? Yeah. Um, yeah, I more think of the dying Livia. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Yeah, and that's a you know a scene in bed as well. It is. For what it's worth, I mean, you know. It's all in the stack. You know who else is in this episode? John Hurt. John Hurt. Is in yes, the the adult Claude um, 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 Caligula has made his way, and he looks nothing like you, Jewel. What's what's up with that? Well, see now, when I was a kid, I had blonde hair, so. Were you more uh, of a Malcolm McDowell or more of a John Hurt? Uh, I was, well, my blonde hair, I was more of a, uh, how do I put this? I wasn't bleach blonde. Uh, so I was just a blonde hair with some. You didn't use Sun In? No. Uh, you remember Sun In? Yes. Yes, yes. But no, uh, I did not have a popular high school product when I was in high school many years <laughs> low those many years ago. <laughs> so you guys are who I really like too in this episode is Patrick Stewart. So let's let's talk about him because he has a role to play here in this episode. What did you guys think of Patrick Stewart's character in this episode? He's hooking up Claudius with his his sister. Um, what did you guys think of it? It's it's wonderful. I mean, his scene where he's manipulating Claudius, you don't see her that often. Well, won't be that much of a loss. Mm -hmm. He's he is working smarter, not harder. Right. He is. But he's also chosen this time to completely lay his hand out in terms of, you know, he's going he's he's going for the big score right now. Yeah. And and. Mm -hmm. You know, the, I think the, the actor who makes him look even better is the fellow who plays Caster. It was sort of the anti Sejanus. Yes, anti anti. <laughs> He's, yeah. Jules is afraid we're, we're going to give him Caster oil. And oh. so he has fled the, uh, he's fled the scene. <laughs> Gordon, what'd you make of this? I thought. You know, it's nice to see Patrick Stewart not play a, uh, a a staid, you know, kind of boring guy. I think he really relishes playing the villain. Oh, yeah. And I, and I think it's it, it's also nice to see Patrick Stewart try to get down with his bad self. You know, it's it's the it's his worst self. It is, and it's also it's it's a it's he gets to play so much of that in subtext. Uh, in this particular role, it's just like it's just sort of bubbling under the surface. Oh, I'm such a nice guy. I'm thinking of you. You know, it's like the um, it's like the song from um, what is it? Um, Man of La Mancha. They're only thinking right. of him. You know, it's like oh, I'm doing I'm doing you a favor. You know, and you'll have me as a brother-in-law. Ha ha ha. You know, it's that kind of thing. And uh, it's, a, it's a real bonus. Yeah. Mind if I do a, uh, a question comparison here? Okay. I demand are... it. I demand <laughs> okay. it, Jewel. I don't just mind it. I demand it. I'm sure you guys have seen the movie uh, Gladiator. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So compared to this, which is more historically accurate? Um, let, let me answer this one. It don't matter. <laughs> it, it doesn't. But having said that, I Claudius is more historically accurate. There's yeah. so much BS in Gladiator, but it makes for wonderful, wonderful oh, yeah. storytelling. Uh, 
I wasn't there. Yeah. So I can't I can't really weigh <laughs> in that much, you know. I was, I can tell you. It's just oh, I think it, the the Mini Cooper company paid a lot <laughs> to get that that product placement in Gladiator and that, you know, it was controversial. Yeah. Uh, yeah, at no point did any Caesar look like Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> True. And I just want to say my figs are not poisoned. Um, so there's that. Gladiator, uh, how dare you turn your back on me? I mean, <laughs> the, the absolute uh, epitome of, of uh, emperordom. Um, but, uh, it was also the epitome. The epitome yeah. no, of it as well, as Tom no. Waits would put it, the epitome. Now, in this series, we do sort of get gladiator games in this in these in this uh, series. They're, so, yeah, I mean, they go backstage. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't. Which get is a to... funny scene, just about basic stagecraft. Yeah. yeah, you don't get to see him. Was that was that because of cost or just? Yeah. Yeah, because you've got to get a fight choreographer. You got yeah, you got a lot to do there, uh, and, yeah, yeah, and probably and, a much larger space in which to do it. Uh, Gordon, they have to move the entire Senate set off of its moorings in order to create, you know, uh, Gordon, the gladiatorial yeah, kind. Uh, yeah, and, and, and plus, your gladiator games were brutal. I mean, these were these were slaves or you know conquered people fighting for their lives mm -hmm. you know and it, this wasn't uh pro wrestling which is all fake and and only done for the television like like you you were really kill or be killed and sometimes if you made it through it and you know were were trying to win your freedom and they did and the the powers that be didn't want you you'd often have to like fight a bear or a lion and there are gladiators who specialized in just fighting anim animals animals They're called yeah Bestiarius, bestiarius. So no, they're not going to do gladiator fights on on I Claudius. I, I know you're looking forward to that, Joel. But I'm it's looking not forward to happen. that. I yeah. I mean, it would have been great. To, if they had fought other jock straps, right? You know. You know, if if there had been a scene of Derek Jacobi fighting a man in a bear suit, <laughs> which I think probably was at the rap party, uh -huh. uh, but uh, but not before. Yes. Well, I think to. They do give a great illusion of it because you do hear crowd cheering. Sure. sure. I, well, they, they, they do a great job doing that rather than sure. the show the violence and stuff. We talked about that in the last episode, too. Mm. You know, we, we talked about, um, you know, the the how limited they were with their budget, but they turned that into a motif. Yeah. You know, of we're just, we could focus on all this Alexander Corda kind of spectacle. Yeah. But we're gonna focus. God, I sound like James Dobson. Focus on the family. But they do. This episode, I believe, is the most spectacular of all the episodes where you get, you know, a whole dozen uh, extras kind of milling around in the background. The the marketplace scenes, and yeah. and in a way, the marketplace scenes do feel a little out of step with the rest of the show. They're a little claustrophobic because of the space, I think, that they had to work with. They're a bit well, claustrophobic, but they're still good atmosphere. I think. Oh, they're, they're fine atmosphere. By out of step, what I meant was that seeing such a large scene. Instead of more the intimate scenes that are consistent. Yeah, in an exterior. You know, the, the, uh, the prostitute contest at least is happening sort of indoors, for God's sake. Right. Uh, <laughs> Don't, don't, not in the yard, <laughs> guys. Come on. Uh, well, maybe the courtyard. The lawn darts out of there. <laughs> what, Alan? What? Maybe the courtyard. In the courtyard, yeah, yeah. yeah. by Marriott. Uh, but, um, but yeah, that 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 works. I mean, I'm happy to see the marketplace scenes, and there's there's a funny marketplace scene I think coming up in uh, one of the Caligula episodes. Uh, where uh, they've screwed up the statue or something like that. Uh, yes, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, Claudius is not happy. Yes, uh, I I like the scene where where they're where Livia and uh, uh, Tiberius's cars have basically pulled up next to each other, mm -hmm. and they're they're pretty much leaning out the window, kind of griping <laughs> at each other at a red light. 
Yeah. Um, I, I enjoyed that. Yes. Uh, I was also interested in, in seeing the development of, of Tiberius as a complete sexual pervert. And they literally, the, the makeup people started to do subtle things. I mean, he's, he always had a kind of mottled face anyway. But he, he, there was one scene where he's looking in the mirror and he turns away. And, he, and, uh, uh, and it looks like he's starting to um, evidence the, um, the effects of uh, syphilis. You know, yeah, it's, it's an, I think it's a sort of a it's an underscore touch. It's not, you know, super obvious. It's not like he's walking around like a leper or anything, but it's 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 interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and I'll, I, speaking of the, the perv angle on this, I I think because they had established such a narrow focus of cast and so on. We really get away with just hearing about what's going on on Capri, and not, you know, having to see it. Right. Uh, that that serves them really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that whole opening scene in the in where they're lounging around, you know, post orgy or whatever, eating orgy or whatever, and the 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 wife just goes into this whole story about she and the daughter being you know accosted by the emperor and uh, what an opening scene it's like amazing scene you don't know where you know the first time i saw it i absolutely no idea where this is going because she sets it up like oh this is i have a surprise for you and then it's like this enormous shock it's really well written it's it's incredible yeah oh. Gordon. it also yeah, I, sets up an, a general enmity for for Tiberius too. I mean, it's just like he, everybody in, in in Rome is going to hate this guy if they don't already. So. Yeah, I mean, this is this is probably the the start of Tiberius's fall, so to speak, mm -hmm. because you know it's you know the woman goes from talking about some really, even though she doesn't go get too graphic because this is seventies BBC television, she talks about how Tiberius was like, hey. Yeah, I want to do your daughter, and and the woman's like, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll do you. And then there's, and then he kind of, he kind of gets creepy on the daughter, and and so I, I also think that Baker is starting to, George Baker is bringing a little bit more of the kind of like, like yeah, I'm old, I'm the emperor, I can do anything. Energy. It's a decadence that's mm -hmm. really set in. Um, he's, I think he was always, all, always sort of morally and ethically decadent, but now he's acting on a lot of the stuff. I mean, that, you know, with the pornography and the sex and all of that sort of thing. So, and Caligula is manipulating him through his vices, which is a very Caligula thing to do. Yeah, yeah. I also think, too, George Baker's character, you can see how far he's come, too. From where he lost his brother to where he kn he kn like he knew his character knew that his mother you know had his brother killed sure and that's why he threw it in her face in that one episode and that's why he intentionally got himself banished and got got out of dodge he didn't really want to be around her he really didn't at that point he gave zero shits and in all honesty. I can't blame him with this, but this time he's, I mean, he's turning up the heel heat. I mean, and you got to, I mean, we know he's, we know his mother's the heel, the main heel. We know he's sort of a side heel, but now because Sean Phillips, his character is dying, you know, let's, let's, let's get, let's turn George Baker's character's heat up. Why not? Yeah, and the thing is, also, Tiberius is not interested in ruling. Uh, he's interested in the power that he has. He's not interested in doing the governmental ruling. Mm -hmm. He hates that shit. So that's, you know, Caligula easily distracts him from his scrolls by giving him another scroll, which has nothing to do with him signing the off. The sacred account. scrolls. Right. And the lawgiver. And... And 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 then there's Sejanus who manipulates his paranoia by, you know, having these purges, these Senate purges, treason charges against anybody and everybody um, that you know Sejanus wants 
uh, out of the way. If if only if only Tiberius had had Commissioner Tunney at his side, he would rule the day. Okay. Yeah, he needed a good. He needed somebody to to uh, to uh, uh, watch his back, and he has nobody. He's not watching his own back. So I, I say that because, uh, well, Commissioner Tunney was a yes. WWE commissioner once mm-hmm. upon a time in the nineties. But um, I do I do agree with you guys. I love the crowd scene we get because we do get a lot of extras in this episode. And I really love the stuff that's going on in the Senate, too. We have some, you know, heelish heat going on in the Senate, which I don't mind. So here's a question for you guys. I know it comes down to writing. How did the, they... The words. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. How did they get so... How were they able to sort of control the Senate at this point or feel like it was controlled? You mean in terms of his, his historical yeah, history? Yeah. Well, um, basically at this point, the Senate was basically very nominal because you went from, there used to be, before Julius Caesar, there was a Roman Republic where you had elected senators and you had two tributes who were kind of like the, the moderators. So it would be like, um, you know, with this podcast, you have this podcast with the Roman Senate uh, Patrick and I would be the moderators. You know, we're kind of helping to, to, to shape things along. Julius Caesar comes in and he gets rid of the tributes. He's like, I'm in, I'm in charge now. And now that that we're, we're heading into an empire, the Senate is really just they're they're elected, but all they really do is just rubber stamp um, the emperor decisions. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 it. I mean, they're ultimately expendable. I mean, even from the back where Brian Blessed is like. Did you sleep with my daughter? Um, I mean, it's it's pretty much you know as long as you didn't as long as you didn't push too hard, like in the um, in some justice, you know the the one guy who kept, who said, "Hey, I have letters with the with the imperial seal on it," and you know he was his way of saying, "Oh yeah, yeah," you know he that was his way of throwing down, and Tiberius kind of said, "Oh well, that's not going to happen," and. And this was a guy who was so cowardly, he couldn't even kill himself. His wife had to do it for him. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it it all went to naught because little baby Caligula, a.k.a. little baby Jewel, had to set those (laughs) scrolls on fire. (laughs) You burned the damn scrolls, Jewel. Why did you burn the scrolls? Well, listen, for an encore when I was two, I decided to put the car in reverse. Um, Yeah. But anyway. um... (laughs) Wow. The chariot, yeah. the chariot in reverse. <laughs> uh, my mother was. I imagine she was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Self with pride. <laughs> I do. I do again. I do really like like this episode. I really love John Hurt's performance. It's very creepy, very eerie. Oh, just you wait, Henry Higgins. Yeah, it's it's. Right? This is just the precursor. This is a nice preamble. Yeah, He's yeah. sort of introducing his slyness in this episode and, and and a bit of his corruption but yeah, yeah wait until you see the sundance jewel i think i think you'll be I, I, i've seen the sundance i've seen yeah, the watching special features on once upon a time in in america right or once upon a time what? in the west yeah yeah you didn't yeah yeah yeah, the yeah there's this isn't the same as the sundance in once upon a time in the west it's a totally <laughs> unique <laughs> Can you imagine Charles Bronson doing that? <laughs> Here comes the harmonica again. Uh, oh my god! Oh my god! No, I I did watch this all the way through. I will say that there's a it, there's going to be a scene where this woman gets tied up, and he, he, yes. John Hurt's character Caligula does find out that she's pregnant prior to this, and he after, they don't show what happens. He comes out the room, his mouth's a little bloody, and he goes, "Don't go in there. Don't yeah. go in." There. I mean, it's <laughs> that, that's in the future, Jewel. Yeah, it's, or it's uh, included in, in various documentaries about the show. So, right. Th- thanks for spoiling it, Jewel. <laughs> no, <I'm not>. thanks. <laughs> for... Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> 
Here's another spoiler. Quentin Collins is a werewolf. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The 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 spoiler police were all over the day books. And oh, it's like that. really? Yeah. Really, guys? That's like that's like saying that a book about Shakespeare is something is full of spoilers. Uh, it's the, the the show's been off the air for a while. Yes. What is it? Two score and 13 years ago, this happened on the show. You know, it's like. But I'll, I'll, well, that's, I got a side thing about that. I, I did put in something for people who are sensitive about spoilers. Uh-huh. I didn't get a thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Thank uh, that, well, thank you, Jewel. I didn't get a thank you from the person who was complaining about it. That would have been nice. I thought that was real. <laughs> I real hear that. I know that the whole you know. page in there. I know that Danielle got raked over the coals when she first started her podcast over spoilers. So that's why she put her little. You're kidding on. me. Yeah, she did. She got a lot. Really? Of- she sh- a- actually has a she has a disclaimer at the beginning of every single podcast. In the in the there words of Triumph, the insult <laughs> comic dog. Here's a spoiler: you will die alone. Here, really, here's the steamer for you. <laughs> well, yeah. Here, well, here on here on this podcast, the host. About giving away spoilers, absolutely give zero fucks. Uh, hey. So there's that. Um, <laughs> we'll take that. That's that is that is a that is a mission statement. Yes, you don't care. That goes way beyond like spoilers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's a spoiler alert. Another spoiler alert, people. Halloween ends is not as bad as Jewel says it is. <laughs> I've never seen it. You stop that. Oh, you stop that. It. You stop that. Um, <laughs> where's the ban button? Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, no, I'm kidding. What's you guys' favorite? This, this episode's full of fun scenes. Um, I do love the opening a lot, too, where because you're really surprised by this woman, how she starts off about how Tiberius wanted to sleep with her daughter. I wasn't expecting her to kill herself, and it is shocking. What's you guys' favorite scene in this episode? Uh, uh, I mean, to me, this is a very painful episode. You know, even uh, even just Sejanus' sleazy planning with uh, with Lavilla. I can I can see where you might you know you find find parts of it fun. Um, to, to me, this is the most gut-wrenching end of any episode, except maybe the last one. Uh, and it's a wonderful portrait of our relationship with villainy, because you, you, you so identify with Claudius, Mm -hmm. and you have been through really half the series at this point with Livia. And I think at one point he says Rome is dying. Doesn't he say that? Mm, that sounds right. And and there's something really effective about that. And um, and you know there's this thing that happens sometimes when when bad people are on their way out, and sort of all of the rancor goes away, and you just you just connect with their fear and they are connecting with their humanity. And you yeah, know, if, you, if you've ever been at the, at the bedside of someone who's dying, I, it's, it's a very, very difficult um, ending to watch. I mean, it really got me. It really, really, mm-hmm. really got me. And, and, you know, but in a, in a good way, you know, Roger Ebert, God bless him. You know, the guy said, uh, no great movie is ever truly depressing. Every bad movie is. And, you know, this, this is really great. It's, it's very sad, but it's yet one more thing the show gives is this ability to connect with that moment. Right. Well, we get that uh, connection through uh, Claudius too, because he's willing to give over any horror they might oh, have. Oh yeah. 
confessing all the poisonings and he's asking her all these questions. He is not judging her at that moment. He's uh, not. He's not. He's just because that's she is. She's uh, approaching her mortality there. And of course, later in the episode, she's actually is dying and, and he, he goes to visit her again. And, and the, the, then the issue of her humanity becomes, I don't want to go to hell. I want to be a goddess so I don't have to go to hell. You know, and it's like it's it, it is it's sad. You actually feel for this person that you totally. just vilified up to the point where she becomes human and and. Um, Sean Phillips really makes that happen, I think, along with, uh, you know. Yeah. Gordon, what'd you think? Yeah, I thought the end, the, the ending was just, it's a gut punch, especially since it, it, you contrast it with Caligula's scene with Livia, where he's all, oh, you're not a goddess and you're an evil woman. Whereas Claudius actually shows her a lot more compassion than she's shown him throughout the entire series. Mm -hmm. You know, where she's where she talks about like and when she finishes, you know, put a coin in my mouth, which is in, you know, in, in at that time, you'd put a coin in somebody's mouth because they would have something to give uh, to the Sharon. fairy man. Yeah. To Sharon. To our sticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing and, is, and who would play, who play Mr. Roboto on endless. <laughs> repeat? That's right. Well, that's when she goes to hell. Okay, um, but it's it, it interesting that her 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 attitude towards um, Claudia changes too. I mean, she it starts with, oh, I see your stutter has gone away, and from that moment on, it's like, okay, you're not a moron. I've suspected this, but now I can I can really see that you're not. That and and she whispers to him, play the fool. It's one of the Again. last things she says to him, play the fool, keep doing it, because, you know. Well, it's, it's like what they say in Big Red One, you know, the only glory of war is survival. But she also, knows, she also knows about the prophecy. She gave him the prophecy that he was going to become yes. the emperor. So mm. she figures that's, that's the way to do it. That's the way I, out. I think that moment where he actually does put the coin in the mouth is such a sign of of respect mm -hmm. you know and he's doing that i think as much for him as for her as oh. to really you know remind himself that you know he is someone who will keep his word mm -hmm. absolutely and also and he's the fact that she she never considered him to be one of her targets, even even in in vilifying him as a moron all those years. And but coming to the realization he wasn't. And she tells him everything. And she's not going to poison him after she tells him everything. He knows that because he he uh, took the leap of faith and drank all of that wine when he showed up at her party. So. And she took note of it. Well, huge was, compliment yeah exactly she took note of it and that's when that's when that respect between them crystallized i guess for that episode for that episode what a what a mature character he is mm -hmm. in the best sense you know yeah. yeah there's an episode of ghost in a shell where togusa puts a coin on a dead man who's rich and he's been targeted for assassination before all this. And they come to his mansion to find out he's already dead. He's already died months ago. And his body's all decomposed, de pretty much decomposed. Sorry, my dryer. I'm going. sorry, that's incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sorry. that's incorrect. He bean burritos, my, my, my bad. You, sorry, you lost the dating game. Uh, <laughs> And our time here's, is up. Here's, here's a token to play uh, the fairy man. That's what he tells the dead, yes, dead rich guy. Exactly. Yeah. So, interesting. Was, interesting. It, you know, Jewel, we don't use the term that, even <laughs> if he kind of follows it up with man. Um, Man's yeah, and a comma. You don't, you, we don't use that term. He's boatman now. He's boatman. Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> but is he a vulgar uh, boatman? 
Does he I, wear a motor? I, I had a, I had a kid a motor in my, boat. I, I had a kid in my story send his mother and this woman she was fighting to a dimensional prison. So, uh, but <laughs> the Phantom Zone? Oh no! No, not that. Oh, the Danger Zone? Not quite that. Not into the, the boys zone. zone. Not quite that. But with this set. Uh, no, Jewel, I'm sorry. You're this episode, you know, I think you should, you you can should, have should change there. the ringtone on your phone right now because that buzzing is a <laughs> oh, god. Oh my god. So Derek Jacoby, he's he's still acting. What's something you'd like to see him in today? Any of those big franchises where basically everyone he ever worked with got a good part for many, for many, you know, yeah. Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart and, and all of those people, Judy Dench, they all got one. Yes. Except for him. Right. Let's see. What would I like to see him in? Hmm. Um, I, th- I, you know, I really wish that he had been in elementary, maybe playing the the John Noble part. That would have been interesting. Because John Noble plays um, uh, Moreland Holmes, who's Sherlock Holmes' father, who's an original character. And he's kind of the, he's the, um, he's got his hand in a lot of nasty little pies. You know, it's it's hinted that he's involved in unsavory things. Um, you know, kind of, kind of like Jewel with, with with that buzzer. You know, you know something's going on there. I th- I think that's the timer for his meth cooker. Meth cooker. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I think that would have been an interesting because I think uh, Jacoby could, would have played it. You know, um, John Noble plays it very stern and very portentous with a very thick English yeah. accent. I think um, Jacoby could have played it maybe still sinister but with a slightly gentler twist and he could also play it on the sly he's got he's got that in his arsenal of acting he can you know it's like i know things that you don't know or i think of this about you but i'm going to keep it to myself that that sort of attitude intrigue in some of the stuff that he's done in the past yeah that would be very interesting actually See. Yeah, yeah, and Joe, you better right. you better go get your 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 hot pockets before your your toaster oven buzzer goes off again. <laughs> oh, that, that that did not work. It froze him. <laughs> yeah, what do you froze, know? Go ahead. <laughs> no, we all froze. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's Caligula's secret. Ready? Hot pockets. <laughs> um. Uh, uh. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I think uh, certainly I would have enjoyed seeing him as Commandant Lassard in uh, in more police academy movies. Yeah, yeah, that that would have been. I think. Yeah, I I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? I could too. Um, if you want to see uh, Jacoby in something that's very different than this, um, if you can find it, uh, the A Team. No. Uh, if you want to see him as something very different than this, he did a production of Cyrano that Terry Hans directed, and uh, it was filmed. He did that in tandem with uh, what was Much Ado. Much Ado, that's right. Yeah, yeah, uh, and Under the Yum Yum Tree, the 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 RSV trilogy. So um, <laughs> but but seriously, um, he's he's an amazing Cyrano de Bergerac. And um, that's uh, that is a play. I'm convinced the ghost of Shakespeare is really ticked off. He didn't think up because uh, uh, it's such a it's such a marvelous conceit. Anyway, Jacoby is great, and Pete Postlethwaite is in it. Do you know Pete Postlethwaite? Yes, no. he's a good actor. Now, Jewel, did you see the that Jurassic Park thing with Julianne Moore? Like the second one? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's the hunter. He's the hunter. Okay. okay. Yeah, Who you've seen him in other stuff. Pete mm-hmm. is great. He's also in the town. If you've seen that, he plays a Boston mobster in the town. It's one of his last roles before he passed away. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. He's, Very, uh, 
his character in Jurassic World is really interesting. Uh, He's an interesting I, actor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Vince Vaughn uh, is in that movie too. Uh, so, with, often two two performers often mentioned in the same breath. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel too when I watch that when I watch Jurassic World, Jurassic, basically Jurassic Park two. When I saw Vince Vaughn's character, I'm thinking. I told my brother this at the time. It felt like Vince Vaughn was sort of playing a MacGyver type character more so than anything else. Um, but that was interesting. I would say Derek Jack could be. There's a lot of things I'd like to see him in. Uh, number one, not necessarily see, but do voiceover work for because they are doing new Ghost in the Shell stuff here in a couple of years. Um, but before that. They, I read they're doing a young Sherlock Holmes. Why not put him in it somehow? So, well, if it's half as good as that movie, mm-hmm. uh, now, uh, yeah. what was that, Gordon? Yeah, I, 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 I was about to say, I, I think that new young Sherlock Holmes is like going to be directed by Guy Ritchie. Yeah, it so, is. Uh, well, I, who knows? Um, all I was going to say very quickly is that uh, Jacoby, I think, does his final bow or last bow. What, what's the Conan Doyle? Is it final bow? Yes. Yeah. Or last yes. bow. Yeah. Uh, Jacoby does the audio of that. And you can hear that on uh, on Audible listening that goes with you wherever you are. Um, and uh, and he's, he's marvelous. He does a really good job. Uh, he also plays in a, an, a sort of an audio play version of I, Claudius, a very shortened one that Audible did. Uh, he plays Augustus. Cool. cool. Yeah. I'd like, oh. to see him, I'd like to see him do Lear, actually. I mean, he may be past it in terms of it, the energy that it takes, because it really takes the energy of a younger man rather than, you know, somebody that's maybe 10 or 15 or even 20 years younger than the character. Yeah. But, you know, somebody in their... 50s maybe 40s and 50s is is a when when uh olivier did it he was sick and he was he had cancer and he did not have the energy to do it but he did it it was filmed so he could stop and start and stop and start and get through it uh even if that's what it took for jack uh, Jack B to do it it would be interesting to see his take on that role i think yeah i'd like to see jack B uh be lead singer for a van halen tribute band Awesome. Now, if you uh, if you really want to see something interesting, Jewel, look up uh, Derek's brother Lou, and uh, check that out. It's a big oeuvre. It's a big oeuvre. Especially in the movie, everything you always want to know about sex, but we're afraid to ask. God. Yeah. Which is a real movie. It is a real movie. Lou Jacoby. Oh, he's, he's doing. Oh, oh, no, no, no. They they were identical twins. <laughs> oh, for the love of Christ! You didn't know that Derek Jack was born in Brooklyn, did you? Wait, he di- Wait, he di- He his brother died in two thousand nine. It wasn't really his brother. No. Oh, okay, okay. I, we were just pulling your leg. He's yeah, the man. time to make the donuts, man. Oh. <laughs> and he would have been my choice for Captain Picard. <laughs> Can you imagine Lou Jacoby and Captain Picard? He's <laughs> like, what are we doing here? <laughs> Negotiating with the board. It says here Lou, Jac- it says here Lou Jacoby, he was also a stand-up comic. Yes. Uh, he played the violin, made the spoof record albums Al Tajuna. Uh, okay. I didn't know any of this. Yeah, he's he did everything. Film, television, Broadway. And he did Born. a ton. Yeah, his middle name was Brickant. Yes. Yeah, so, so. Well, his British name, birth name, Lewis Harold Jacko, Jacobitch? Jacobitch? Um, Who are yeah. you calling? <laughs> That's not, no. <laughs> no, Tovarich. No, no, not the beach. Tovarich. Beach, beach. Oh, my God. God. Me and trying to read people's last names. Um, I butcher my own name on occasion. So it's okay. Your own nickname? 
Yes. I have many nicknames. Uh, uh, he has oh, many oh. names. I have many nicknames. And he has uh, many faces. He is legion. Yes. yes. Apparently, I look like John Hurt. Um, who knew? Um, <laughs> more of a Malcolm McDowell. Yes. Catch you later. <laughs> no. God, you guys. Is there anything you guys want to add about this episode before we go? No. I, yeah. I have nothing more. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, great episode. I will say this thing about uh, Caligula's blonde locks get terrifying by the end of this. Well, Caligula was losing his hair in real life. Uh, I mean, you know, and he was drinking a lot of lead. Yes. yes. That's everybody wants to talk about syphilis, of course, because it's 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 more fun than lead poisoning to get. Yes. But lead but, was um, more pedestrian and it was yeah. Yeah, and, and so there was a lot of lead poisoning going on to these guys, and lead, the flavor of lead was actually a popular thing. It was kind of like chocolate syrup, uh, really. I mean, they they enjoyed the flavor that they got from the pipes and from the cups and so on. It was one of the main reasons they used it so much. Yeah. Are you guys good for episode eight tomorrow? Are you good? Or seven? Or, or yeah, seven. Well, the one, seven, seven. The, yeah. the next one. Yes. Yeah, the next yep. one, sorry. I, I am. Yep. Gordon? Yeah, I'm I'm good. Cool, cool. All right. All right. Thank you guys. Links to Patrick Perry McCray's Dark Shadows Daybook of is gonna be the description box. Link to Alan Glenn's YouTube channel is gonna be the description box. Collins Port After Dark. And link to Gordon Malkowski's Amazon page is gonna be the description box. Gentlemen, you have a good night. Good night. Good night, night sir. Bye. <laughs>